board meeting. Um, everybody's here. Two board members are not in person. Uh, Tiffany is on the phone though, and Samir is on the phone as well. Um, so. Hey everybody. Hello. There we go. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Um, everybody here can see the agenda, but there's a few other people on the phone. I'm not sure they can see it, but um, basically we're going to do a quick operational update um, with some Q&A. Um, we're going to do questions from the board committee reports, and we're going to talk about DrupalCon Asia. Um, we're going to get um, a vote on the um, infrastructure working group chair, and then we're going to get an update on the Drupal 8 Accelerate program. That's it. Okay, so uh, for operation update, well, first let me start. Are there any uh, candidates from the last election in the room? Just you, honey? Oh, there we go. That's nice. Meet okay. each other. <laughs> yeah, they match. Good job, you guys. Way to coordinate. Um, I've just been running into candidates all over the all over the con this week. So just thanks again for running and for being here and continuing to have interest in the board and what we do. And I'm so excited that so many of you guys are so uh, engaged. So uh, looking forward to the next election. Uh, okay, so some operational updates for us. Uh, we reframed this a little bit in our last couple of meetings, so I'll start with some highlights for the organization. Um, the first one is that our sales team is now fully staffed. Um, we have a couple of positions that we plan to open this year, and we had a salesperson uh, retire earlier, and uh, that was is a you know was definitely a challenge for that sales team to function the way that it should. Uh, but we have everyone staffed, everyone's here at the con as well, and I think we have some really great folks on the team who are really good fit for the community um, and the work that we're doing. So if you get a chance to meet um, Jenner, Jenner and Molly, or um, Mark, not Mark Carver. That's better. Mark, definitely <laughs> not Mark Carver. <laughs> Mark Brandsetter um, on the floor uh, this week. That you know, that's say hi to them, please, and welcome them. Uh, we also, in the last month, uh, deployed the community role on Drupal.org, and this is just another one of the small things towards the overall roadmap of uh, making our um, user experience better. Um, and what this role does uh, is, after you have achieved a certain a uh, number of interactions on Drupal.org, and that be, can be comments or commits or you know group uh, posts, other kinds of activities. Um, you then can be a, a community. You can be get this community role. Um, and what's awesome about that is that a it's just a little bit of recognition for folks who are giving so much to the community. Um, just, you know, this real human who's doing great stuff in Drupal. But people with the community role also get to wave a magic wand and bring other people into the community by confirming them on Drupal.org. So once they are confirmed users, right, you can um, you can leave uh, leave comments on issue queues, et cetera, et cetera. So they're able to help uh, be ambassadors and bring other people into the community. So we're really excited about that chain of events that's happening um, on the user role side of things um, towards that overall uh, roadmap. Um, and the last uh, big highlight for us in the last month is that we launched the Tri Drupal program, uh, which uh, is, is pretty new. Um, and we love this program because it does two things um, that are fantastic. Uh, what it does for us is, first of all, helps us towards our mission of uh, promoting adoption of Drupal. Uh, uh, on the page, uh, you can choose from several partners, and the list will continue to expand, uh, where we uh, where you can start go and without having to pay for it, start at least a 30-day demo of Drupal. Uh, so if you're evaluating Drupal, you can come in and get a fully functioning demo site and, and start to see how uh, Drupal works for you and your organization. Um, so we're excited from that, about that from a, a, an adoption site, and it's had a really great uptake. Uh, correction, so it's a three-day demo. Three-day demo. Is, it, is um, that live? I don't see it, it on the site. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it takes uh, 30 days. Well, the one has different words on it now. Start oh, the hosted Drupal demo. Yes. Oh, Everyone? try Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Are we done showing Jeff Wolf? How do you think you're done? Excellent. Is this thing on? <laughs> All right. So, 
So we're really excited about that because it really goes towards our mission. Uh, it also is <coughs> funding a revenue stream for the association of elected EPU. So, so that's really fantastic. We're excited to have that launch. Um, I just want to say, you know, give a special shout out to Roy Colton and you know other folks who in the queues really have been helping us um, improve the overall experience for this um, on the site. And we're going to continue to work with uh, work with the community while we um, you know deploy this and all kinds of other fun stuff. So those are the highlights. Any questions about those? Uh, you, you said there was a lot of update on this. Do we have any idea what that is? Um, yes, I used to once upon a time know those numbers. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we had anticipated some amount of collect for per per uh, uh, client up there. That's fine. I, 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 I know that at least one of the partners that are at this moment is giving me a, a number of uh, seven hundred. We have a minimum monthly guarantee with the CPA on top. If there's more traffic, so the more traffic we provide to them beyond the threshold, then we all make money together. Okay. And um, so a 700, what we're hearing is that 700 is a higher conversion rate than we anticipated coming out of the gates. Right. So strong beginnings. Other questions? Also from the crowd? No? Uh, why just three days? Um, well, it depends on who the partner is, how long they actually make it available. Uh, some of our partners have options for free accounts, so technically it lasts as long as they want to keep it. Uh, but for our partners that don't have that sort of um, structure in place, we wanted to give them a way so that they could uh, be a part of the program, do a demo that would highlight the best of Drupal, and hopefully it leads to conversions for them as well. Um, and it really came down to the, the, the technology being a little bit different. Uh, something like Simply Test Me, it's 30 minutes. So we felt like three days was a much better way for somebody to get in there and really get their hands dirty uh, compared to more of a developer focus uh, tool like Simply Test Me. And we're still looking at a couple partners like Simply Test Me and um, try to play that com and, and trying to figure out if they can fit into this program as well given their constraints. Anything else? Okay, uh, the rest of the operational uh, update uh, we, on our two watch list is revenue overall. Um, so we went into 2015 uh, with an expected um, and a, a planned deficit spend for the year. Um, our investment this year is in the is in the sales team so that we can build strong revenue lines and continue to do programs like Drupal 8 Accelerate and others to give back more to the community. Um, and uh, and uh, and so we've really invested in that revenue side of things. However, like I just said, we just got the sales team fully staffed, so we have had some softness in revenue. Um, the con was a little slower than anticipated. We had. Um, slightly lower sponsorship numbers uh, than budgeted, um, and slightly lower um, ticket sales than budgeted. Uh, however, those have been offset mostly on the expense side, thanks to Rachel, who's amazing, and we love her. Um, so we don't see a net income effect from that, but you know, uh, it's, it's there. Uh, the real issue has been um, on the non-con revenue, so um, advertising and other programs, uh, we have some things that are totally firing and some things that are not. So we're going to continue to really tweak around the revenue lines um, throughout the year. Uh, but the bigger picture is that we have to really rethink our overall revenue model, not just some separate revenue lines. And we're going to start to bring that thinking to the board in June. So we'll have some executive session discussion around that because we'll be sharing some financials, which you don't do publicly until they're approved. Um, and then we'll you know, be bringing that out more broadly. So. Questions there? Okay, uh, and because we're watching that, our two low lights are revenue related. Partner programs are one area of slowness. The supporting partner program got off to a slow start with a very distracted and overworked salesperson, <laughs> the one remaining salesperson we had. Um, the general supporting partner program feels like it's back on track. The numbers are starting to look really good for that. But we do have the um, hosting partner program, which that's the salesperson that retired, right? And we just got that person back on board. So we're hopefully can catch up some of that revenue, but some of it just may already be lost for the year. Um, so so that was a low night. And then I, I mentioned con revenue coming a little low. Those two things are, you know, the uh, 
the not wins in the month of April. <coughs> so that's where we're at. Things we're working through. Any questions? <coughs> All right. I think the next topic was the um, the board committee updates. Is that right? That's right. So they're in the package. Yeah, I don't know if governance or Zach, if you guys have anything you want to add. Yeah, we didn't need. Uh, we haven't needed same, to later. The same thing for the exec. Okay. Well, that's easy. Right. No. Is there any questions on that? I have. I have one. Samir, you're on the line. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm here. Um, do you have time for a governance call while Matthew and I um, are are in a room together still? Okay, cool. Let's try to schedule something for. Oh, we'll do it in mail. I should. I'm sorry. We should have talked about it on the weekend, but. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Other questions? All right. Let's move on to um, DrupalCon Asia. Okay. Well, I'm really excited to announce that we are going to have a DrupalCon Asia. And Woo! Thank you to the uh, community in India who hosted Rachel and I so we could really explore where to have this event. And um, we went from Bangalore to Delhi to Mumbai to assess which city was the best one. And I'll go into a little bit more information, but I am not revealing where the location is. You're going to have to come to the closing session to hear that big news. So, did you kind of skip our, um, our pun thing? I'm not done with my presentation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're off the hook. All right. All right, so. <laughs> Let me change the slide. Okay, oh, it worked. Okay. So, anyhow, like I said, um, we were looking at a couple of different cities. Um, you know, Bangalore uh, stood out because it is an IT hub, and most of our Drupal.org traffic comes from there. Uh, so, we wanted to see what we could do to. Um, make that work and bring more people into the project there in Bangalore. Uh, we went to New Delhi. We were hosted there, and there was even a camp for us. That was pretty exciting. And there is a really strong Drupal community. It's the one of the older communities, longer, long-standing communities uh, in India. Uh, it's also the government hub for the country. And then we went to Mumbai, where they also have a strong Drupal community that's been growing over the years. And uh, they have a strong business hub. So those are the three cities we evaluated. And when we were there, there's a couple things that we were um, looking at just to make sure we were mitigating our risk. Whenever we That's go into a new, what's that? That's giant. Point. That's yeah, kind of I know. I just like the picture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you think nobody's gonna know? That's giant. It's elephants. <laughs> no, the wrong one. So anyhow, um, right. So whenever we go into a new country, we don't know really what we're going to be dealing with. We've been doing these events in North America and Europe for quite a long time, so we know what to expect. So we really had to pick a, a city and a location to help reduce our risks. So these were just a few of the things that uh, we had to consider when we were evaluating. So one, we had to make sure it had a strong Drupal community so we could make sure that people will show up for sure <laughs> for our event. Uh, we wanted to make sure it's attractive and easy so uh, people throughout India could come, but also people from Beyond, you know, even from, for us uh, in North America, we have to make it easy for us to, uh, to get into that city. Um, and, of course, we want to make sure it's exciting for sponsors to invest because we really are going to need a strong sponsor base. Um, we know that it's going to attract a pretty large crowd. Uh, I think 1,000 is modest, uh, you know, for a goal. And um, so we want to make sure also that venue has a good brand experience. Uh, there's always that, like, can't be too fancy, can't be too much like being in a basement, so I have to find the right one. <laughs> and, of course, the most important thing is that the venue, the catering, the internet, everything has to fit within our budget. So these are uh, some pictures from our tour uh, to all these cities, and I just, like I mentioned before, the community really came out in full force and showed us such a warm welcome and really rolled out the red carpet to help us really understand these cities and the community. So special thank you to everyone who made it so special for us. And when we were there, we talked about um, goals and strategies. So we did a lot of work with the community in India to decide what we really wanted to achieve if we bring DrupalCon Asia to India. 
Some of the things we talked about was that we want to unite the Indian community. Right now they have camps and meetups all over, but they never get together as one large community within their country. And then, of course, we want to connect them with the world for knowledge sharing. We um, have been seeing a, a, a strong contribution culture that's been growing in India. We want to accelerate that. There's so many Drupalers that we just really want to bring them in the path to have them be part of our community giving back to the code. Um, so that's going to be a big uh, focus for this event. And then, of course, with all these developers that are out there, we want to make sure we're growing their skill level so that they are really contributing to the project in uh, very meaningful ways and making, obviously, great websites. Um, and then there's always the need to connect these developers with employers. And so we, we feel this here in North America very much that we need to have more talent. They feel the same way in India. Uh, they have a lot of initiatives going on to grow their talent pools right now. And then in terms of strategy, we're going to use this event to attract Drupal developers to our community and just further grow them into this contributing uh, community. That is the strategy for this event in a nutshell. So like I said, when we go into a new country, we don't necessarily know who's going to show up. So we have to work with the community to get a good sense. And this is what we are anticipating, is that it would be 80% Indians coming from the country, 20% 20, 20 uh, from outside the country. We feel that we're calling it DrupalCon Asia to make sure people from, whether it's from Saudi Arabia, whether it's from Vietnam, you know, all throughout even China, let's make sure they know this is for them too. But, you know, just even talking about this event here at DrupalCon Los Angeles, we are already hearing so many Americans say, yeah, we are going to this one. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we'll see how that goes. But it's going to be very much a developer event. We see that with the, the camps in India as well, is that that's who they're catering to. That's who we should expect. Um, and so we'll also probably see some site builders. Um, and, of course, we'll have the CXOs from uh, all the Drupal shops there in India and in the surrounding area. Uh, and we might see some CIOs coming to evaluate Drupal. This is definitely not a big marketing event to get more businesses to adopt Drupal in India. So that's not a goal, but we might see some, some people that will show up expressing interest. Um, every time we go into a new country, we have to understand what works for their culture. And for this, uh, for India, what they recommended is that we have the event um, starting on a Thursday, where we'd have trainings, a business summit, and a community summit. Uh, we worked with the community on the price points for training, what's um, typical price points for them. And then Friday and Saturday would be the keynote and sessions. And again, we worked with the community on what's the right price point. So it would start at $50 for early bird and go up to $100. Um, and then uh, Sunday would be the sprint. And so since the big focus is to get everyone to learn how to contribute, there'll be a big theme within the content that we provide and sprint mentors and um, just really end with a strong sprint at the end. And so just kind of in a nutshell, we'd just like to be really clear who this event is for, primarily developers. We also will be seeing site builders, uh, the Drupal shop owners, and the community organizers. We really want to also level up all the um, community organizer skills and programs so that we can, when we leave, they can still work within the community to keep it strong and growing. There are a few things that we're going to evaluate along the way. Um, there is a big interest in having a government summit. Um, Drupal's really big in the Indian government, so we want to see what we can do to bring people together, kind of like the higher ed summit we had here, see if we can do that in India. Um, and saying, uh, well, that's government. So same concept for government, something similar for higher ed. Um, the business community did say they might want to pull funds and do their own PR. So when Dries went to the camps in 2011, the community did a PR campaign, got some good press. So they're looking to do some of that again. Um, and also, right now, students who cannot pay, you know, right now we, we do need to have people paying to come because, you know, it's, it's an expensive venture, for sure. We're trying to find ways to um, help students come in and bridge the, the gap uh, since they won't have the funds. So we're coming up with maybe we could subsidize some tickets and, and some companies might want to step up in that area. Right, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as you can uh -huh. see, uh, we started working on the budget um, and uh, – just like with DrupalCon Latin America, when we go into a, a new region, a new country, um, 
we are willing to run a deficit on the <clears> event <throat> because this is our investment in the community. We know that over time, as things grow, that just like in North America and Europe, it will uh, it will pay off and it will become uh, neutral to profitable over time. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to make this happen. And so uh, we are willing to run a deficit. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, again, ticket revenue, because the ticket price in India is so low, we are really going to be um, leaning on sponsors to help make this event happen. So I'm really happy that we have a committee forming, that we can go out to the Indian businesses, the SIs. That work's going to happen the next three weeks. And, um, of course, anyone outside of India who wants to sponsor, we would welcome that. So. Anyhow, I am not <coughs> going to tell you where it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We were out last night. I didn't have any alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you have to come to Thursday closing session if you want to know where DrupalCon Asia is going to be located. <laughs> and it's not in Agra. No, I just like that picture, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are just, yeah, you just mess with everybody. It's a red herring. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. All right. We rented the Taj sure. Mahal. Like <laughs> <laughs> $5,000. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Do you want to introduce the community members who have been helping you? Yeah, I would like to do that. Why don't we go, like, Rachid is, uh, go ahead, Rachid. You might have seen him on yeah. stage today. I'm Richard and I've uh, been leading Drupal community in Mumbai for the last five years. I've uh, seen it growing from five persons. The first meetup that we did was five persons and you know I was just literally thinking that how we can grow it and now it's like more than six fifty. Last camp that we did, Drupal wow. Camp Mumbai, Mike was the keynote in that. We had participation of more than six hundred and fifty participants. That was awesome and people are so angry about the whole Drupal thing that's happening. And with the Drupal Con coming to India, they're really excited. And we are, you know, are we going to rock it? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ani. Hi, I'm Ani. Um, so I'm, I'm partner in crime with Rachid from Bombay. But I actually started my Drupal journey a, um, a long time ago for a Dharamshala project um, for the Tibetan government in exile. But um, so I, I was an organizer in Delhi, and I moved to Bombay, and I found it to be a much better city. <laughs> that doesn't tell you anything. So. Um, yeah, so we, we are extremely excited. I'm actually uh, looking forward to the government thing, so I've been working with people. Because in India, there's a massive push for open source. And it was great visiting Australia and Donna's uh, you know, great camp over there. It was fantastic to learn about what the Australians are doing and how the Gulf CMS is working out really well. So we want to kind of use that to maybe provide policy advisory to the government. We use that knowledge to, to build the base around Drupal. That and, and Rajat has actually started a Drupal Campus Ambassador program, so the student initiative is, is, is underway. So really excited, and the DrupalCon is definitely going to help. Like Greece's visit in 2011 was a watershed. This is going to be the second uh, one. Just to uh, you know tell that you know when Greece visited Mumbai, I think that was the point when Drupal community started growing. Yeah. And after you know yeah, four years, when he's visiting again in his DrupalCon in India. Awesome. Awesome. That has to feel Thanks good. Right? Let's go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay, who Very else? Cool. I don't want to miss anyone. Oh, uh, Sundar. Not uh, Professor. Just Sundar. <laughs> Hi. Sundar from IIT Bombay. So I think Dries visited IIT Bombay for his first talk. Yeah, so. so he's been instrumental in helping us understand uh, what's happening in, in higher education and attended the Higher Ed Summit, and hopefully we can take that knowledge and repeat the program. Yeah, we hope to re uh, have one day of uh, Higher Ed and Gov together. So mm -hmm. yeah. let's see if we can uh, bring up some people from the government as well as other institutions. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for all your help. And we have Chakrapani, who's from Bangalore. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Chakrapani. I'm from Bangalore. I started my Drupal journey in 2009. <laughs> I was part of the Drupal Camp Hyderabad when Dries visited Hyderabad. And I moved on to Bangalore since then. I was involved with the Drupal community Bangalore. I've been organizing a lot of events, sports events, and all in Bangalore. And we are going to have the first ever Drupal Camp in Bangalore in July. Yeah. Okay, who's saying? Uh, yeah, really excited to be born in India. 
That's right. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all your help. Hussein is also a, a really big contributor to the event. So thank you for all that you're doing. Yeah. 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 India. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Yay, yay. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, and before we take the focus on Megan, let's just all say happy birthday one more time. Oh, happy yeah. birthday, yeah. Megan. Yeah. Put the crown on. Put the crown on. Put the crown on. Put So, any questions from the, the board or the community about DrupalCon in Asia? Who's planning on going? They're looking at their boss. Yeah, right. Very good. Chakra, you gotta do a chalk chakra. Really <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next Donald item. Run it for <coughs> unless there's more questions. No? I have a question. Okay. Uh, why is the Wi Fi, AC, and uh, power minus? I would like to ask. Oh, yeah, it's true. Why is it, it zero? It's at zero. Oh, it's not zero. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can do this. We're not planning on having any. I will have to say that um, Sundar is in control of the bandwidth, right? You're going to help control us figure out to make sure that whatever we do is going to have the right bandwidth in the venue that we have. So we'll have people on the ground to make sure that because there's it's all kinds of different things in different uh -huh. countries. You need generators and uh -huh. And um, in how there's like so much more logistics, and so he's an expert. He's gonna wherever we end up, he's gonna advise us. Next one. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> He'll travel to that place. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, all right. So the next item is the uh, Drupal Org Infrastructure uh, Working Group Board Chair confirmation. <coughs> sure. Since I prepared this nice long speech for yeah. you just asked me to do that. <laughs> um, so uh, we recently had the uh, chair of the infrastructure working group step down. Uh, it was his recommendation that we uh, promote up on uh, Ryan Newton, who has been on the uh, infrastructure working group since its founding, uh, to be the chair. And uh, I have to say I, I wholeheartedly agree with this, and so I propose it to the board that uh, we take that forward to a vote. And Ryan is. Uh, a rock within our community in terms of uh, keeping our infrastructure up and in performance, uh, helping us get through these really tough transitions. So I think this is a very appropriate, um, a very appropriate transition to make. Uh, I would like to put forward a motion to uh, accept Mariah Newton as the chair of the infrastructure working group. I, I second, second them. Oh, you sure. first. You go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everyone seconding. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 That looks like everyone. Let awesome. me just say, uh, Tiffany and Samir, since you guys are not here. Uh -oh. You're on mute if you're talking. Oh, I muted Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> Try now, Tiffany. Oh, I said I. Okay, nice. Great. Samir? Aye. Aye. All right, there we go. Unanimous consent. Thank you for all your hard work. Right? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Item is the Drupal 8 accelerate update. Yeah, so I don't have any slides for this because I wanted it to be sort of oh, sort of real time. <laughs> hey but yeah. So um, 
Yeah, so the big highlight uh, here, and I'll, let me just uh, explain again for, for anyone who's not used to it yet. Um, Drupal 8 Accelerate was a uh, born out of a conversation that started in DrupalCon Amsterdam about how do we help move uh, Drupal 8 development forward. Uh, we did an experiment at the end of last year where we funded a bunch of core um, core developers to go to Ghent. Uh, I want to thank Wondercraft for hosting them uh, while they were there in Ghent. Um, and you know those developers got together for a week and knocked off some you know two digits worth of criticals from that time. And we thought, okay, this 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 could definitely work. So uh, the board got together um, and helped raise $125,000 from some anchor donors, including many of the companies represented on the board, uh, to basically serve as a match to the community. So the challenge was to the community was, can you match this $125,000 to help us get to $250,000 for the campaign? Uh, so we launched the actual public campaign. We started funding things in January because we knew we had a base to work with, but we launched the fundraising campaign in March. So right now, as you can see, we're at $194,897, not to be too exact about it. <laughs> if I refresh that, it might be higher. Um, and that's about 78% of the way to our $250,000 goal, so we've only got about $55,000 left. Um, so in just two and a half months, that means from the community, we've raised about $70,000, which is fantastic. Wow. Yeah. 273 donors so far, um, and that includes the gift that we just got this week from Time of $25,000. So if you divide that amount by our $273, the average gift has been $260. But if you take Time out, it's 168.15. <laughs> so, um, but that's really amazing. It's really the size of the donation hasn't really, you know, that doesn't matter, right? It's the fact that so many people are are giving and. One of the fun things we've actually been doing is if you go get your Drupal t-shirt, your Drupal hoodie, or your Drupal dog sweatshirt, clearly. At, um, all sold out. All sold really? Out. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, Need more. Can't get those anymore. But if you go to the Drupal store and you get that t-shirt, um, you are able to round up your purchase and put that, you know, put that 25 cents to uh, Drupal A Accelerate. So we're almost at $300, 25 cents at a time, right? Amazing. Yeah, and actually there's really good follow through as far as like the amount of people that do round up. I think it's like, almost, almost it was 125 uh, transactions out of 130 sales. So, oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Find those eleven people. Ask them. I want to find those eleven people who didn't and ask them. <laughs> <laughs> they said they already donated it, but there was a few people that donated uh, large sums. So I'm curious to know how many people actually donated it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
hang out in the Drupal core queue 80 hours a day like I do, which I don't understand why you don't, but you know, I get <laughs> um, No, so uh, in that big list are things like um, uh, performance improvements. We're doing a lot of really awesome stuff in Drupal 8 to make performance um, fast by default, um, which is making uh, really poorly done benchmarks makes us look really good because we're like out to here and everyone else is down here. Um, we're also doing things like um, uh, uh, playing around with, with, with uh, rendering uh, caching. So we're doing things like Facebook Big Pipe, where we can chuck the initial version of the page out really quickly and then let the dynamic bits filter in as they have time. That's going to uh, really improve the perceived speed of Drupal, on especially mobile devices. Um, and we're also doing things to just fix really bad performance regression. So we're really aiming for Drupal 8 to be uh, not only fast by default, but fast for both anonymous and authenticated users. And a ton of work is going into that to make Drupal 8 uh, really, really great in that area. Um, we're also funding security uh, fixes, because nobody wants an insecure Drupal 8. Uh, so that's an important thing that we're doing. Just pat um, it on the back and tell it it's doing a great job. You're doing a great job, yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves you. Stay married. Oh, and stay married. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so security fixes. We're also funding, in addition to just like fixing broken stuff in the Drupal 8 um, thing. If you're curious of what's left and what we might be funding, I had a talk on that yesterday. but. Uh, we're also finding some really great community enablers like the Drupal CI project, uh, which is going to be the next generation test bot that um, is all based on sort of a standard DevOps stack that we can use to do things like test uh, Drupal 8 in multiple environments. So we'll know if we commit a patch that breaks PHP 7, for example, and we can get that all working across any of our supported PHP or database versions. And the cool thing about the way that's being architected is we can expand it later to do things like automated coding standards reviews or behavior driven development testing or all kinds of other cool expansions that we want to get into. So um, yeah, we're trying to, to really be strategic in how we spend this money, not only big impactful things for Drupal itself, but also things that help the wider community as well and, and really forward thinking that way. So mm -hmm. that's cool. my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just I'll just add by you know just a gigantic thank you to everyone who has contributed to the campaign so far and the people who've been doing that work because a lot of hard work, and we're we're getting so close, right? Yeah. And the traceability on that page. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the traceability on that page is awesome. Like yeah. I it's love really nice. the connection between the ticket number, the person, and the funds. Oh, cool. Okay. It's really really cool. That's how yeah. it's supposed to work in open source. Yeah, yeah. it's very it's transparent, great. and it 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 just makes people realize that. This goes to something. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Okay, it's really cool. Good. Yeah, so on our staff, also just to recognize Elise, who's been working with uh, core committers to make Yay. all this stuff go. Thanks for all your work on that. Elise is awesome because she does things that we don't know how to do, like write checks and <laughs> menus. We're just like, things need to happen, and she takes care of it. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Question? <clears throat> Have you guys made a donation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll hug you. Oh, where's my hug? Oh, oh, oh here's your hug. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, guys. Uh, I can tell you that. It's, it's good the question. sum of this, David. Do you see this table? Just add that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, yeah, we can't even do the answer. It's exactly twice as much as we've earned. No. <laughs> That's how we roll. Uh -oh. That is not right. No, I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> That's not precisely right, but it is um, <coughs> um, something around 87000 as we as what we've spent. And you know what sort of like a minimum that is? I, I, know, a huge chunk, I know a huge chunk like a little sprint. Outside of that, is it just small amounts? I mean, it's all Yeah, it looks like there's oh, lots. It? Okay. It's all there. Oh, yeah. That chart. The, the biggest, it's the biggest so nothing less than $500 is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Nothing smaller than $500. Anything from 500 to $12,000. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, the $12,000 is a sprint, but then there's also some individuals that got several multi or multiple grants that are not even close to that. Yeah. 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 You at last before meeting you talked about to change the the way how you keep the money out because you said like mm -hmm. you spent eight hours to fund somebody for five hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. Um how did that change now? Does does, does it work better? 
Yeah, yeah that's a great question. So the, the question is, um, we at the last public board meeting, we talked about um, the, the way that the grant is set up right now is people come to us for, and they say, I would like a certain amount of money to fix this issue. We always start the grants at 500, so we can kind of make sure Everyone is wonderful people, but some people do better with deadline-based development than others. So, um, and we want these things to accelerate need and not, you know, get $500 and eventually fix something. So, um, so we were doing a thing where we would get these um, these grants, or we would we would go out and find people and say, can you work on this for $500 of some of that happening too? Because we want to be respectful of spending the community's money well. But it was a lot of work, and so uh, last board meeting we got approval to um, from the board to. Um, for those individuals who had um, been successful with DA accelerated grants in the past, especially multiple times, instead of making them come back to us every two weeks for now, can I have this much money to work on these things? Just instead, of giving them a chunk of money and uh, for a, for a longer period of time, and say, just work on critical for 20 hours a week for four weeks. Um, and I think that overall has been going really well. I think the the challenge has been that they're working on Drupal 8 more than I'm working on Drupal 8, and so sometimes it's like, wait, whoa, what do you, you know? And so we we have to like do some work to like sync up that. And we've been talking on the core committer team about how to um, better coordinate the efforts of people who are working on Drupal 8 a lot, whether they're funded through D8 Accelerate or otherwise. Um, but that's sort of separate from the D8 Accelerate uh, process, but. Um, in terms of D8 Accelerate, I think it's been working well. Um, you know, we, we continue to see that line going like this, which before was going like this. So it's uh, it's been really good. Um, I think uh, I, you know we'll, we'll have to we we'll have to meet and you know kind of revisit. We want to let the experiment play out for a month and then kind of revisit, see what we wanted to do. Um, so I, I can't tell exactly how that's going to go, but um, but yeah, we were grateful for the opportunity to do that and try it and see how it flew and. Um, you know, um, Andre has been fixing a number of upgrade path issues. Uh, Daniel's been blazing forward on, um, you know, views and entity API integration, as well as multilingual issues. Um, and it's been great to just, you know, trust them to get their stuff done and not have to, you know, baby them along and like do a bunch of discussion about it. So, so overall, I think positive. Um, but it, you know, it is it is a little bit more challenging when. You know, there's there's larger chunks of time and, and not quite as much oversight as when they tell you, I want to fix these three issues, and you say, cool, you know. So, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What happens with the rest of the money when we hit zero critical before we burn through it all? That's a good question. The question was, what happens if we get to zero but, critical before we spend all the money? Well, the good news is, well, if there even after we release eight, we'll find new critical. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So, I mean, even today we have criticals in Drupal seven. So we can, I guess, we could use it towards those criticals. Yeah, we could use it towards there, or we could maybe have a discussion about switching it to porting the major contributed sure modules. <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of things. But once Drupal eight is out, then you know adoption is dependent on how sure fast it's things. So, yeah, and major, if it was a huge major budget, budget money, I don't know that there will be though, because honestly, like I, my intent is to spend most of that money soon, because the sooner we spend it, the more of an impact it has on the on the acceleration of the release. But if we do have a big chunk of money, or or someone decides to write us a fifty thousand dollar check, you know, at the very end, it's like awesome. We will definitely find a good use for that money. No more questions. I think that was the last item. It was. Any other questions in, in, in general about anything else? Do we have another question? If there are no other questions, the motion from the floor for a group photo with our Indian contingent and the board. Yes. 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 Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Great meeting. Yeah. Why don't all the Indians get on the screen side at the end of the table? And I'll just get the whole thing. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, I got a, I got the sunglasses so with the basketball thing, so I'm on like, Okay. Good. Bye, everybody. Okay, everyone say Paneer. Paneer. <laughs> Let's get one for the West Coast. Here we go. All right, it's thanks, everyone. you got to get a oh, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> it turned off. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Hey, there's part. <laughs> and you pay when you get here. Okay, everyone. Three, two, one. Smile. And one.
One more for the West Coast. Here we go. <laughs> it's I learned a, that from an esteemed photographer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, Thank a, it's you. a journalist thing. Alrighty. Oh, oh, that was great. Fun. That was oh. fun. You betcha. <laughs> Be there with my crown on. So.